Hey, Carlos Lago with Edmunds here, and that is the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. Now the Pathfinder is a mid-sized 3.0 SUV that's always been a favorite due to its value and the strong tow capability previous generations have offered. This one's been updated quite extensively with a new exterior, new interior, and new things underneath that we'll explore in this video. Now we aren't going to drive the Pathfinder in this video, but we will talk where appropriate about how it lines up with other vehicles in the segment like the Kia Telluride, Hyundai Palisade, or Honda Pilot. If you like this video and want to see more like it, give us a like and a comment and subscribe too. If you want to learn more about the Pathfinder, check out some of the links below in the description and also visit edmunds.com slash sell my car to get an instant cash offer on the car, truck or SUV you want to sell. As I mentioned, the Pathfinder is a mid-sized three row SUV and that means it can seat up to eight passengers depending on trim and configuration. It's roughly the same size in terms of like length, width and height as other players in the segment like the aforementioned Telluride, Palisade and Pilot. And we don't know pricing information yet, but based on how vehicles in this segment typically are priced, I'm going to say it's probably going to start in the low 30s and probably top out in the high $40,000 range. Now, this new exterior design looks great in person. There was some discussion about the headlights, but I think they look really cool. And I especially like the profile uh, of this new Pathfinder. It's a pretty sharp looking SUV. As for engines and transmissions, the engine is the same three and a half liter V6 that was available in the Pathfinder last year. You get 284 horsepower, and that's about equivalent with what you can expect from other V6s in the segment, like the Kias and Hyundais and Toyotas. I mean, Hondas, because Toyota actually has a hybrid offering, and Ford has a turbocharged four cylinder or turbocharged six cylinder in its Explorer. So while this is normal for what you get for the V6s, uh, you can see other more diverse engine options from other manufacturers. So it might not be too surprising if you see something like that in the, this Pathfinder in the future. The transmission is new. It's a nine speed automatic and that replaces the continuously variable automatic transmission from the last gen. What that means is when you're going to be driving on the road, the gear changes are going to feel more natural. None of that sort of syrupy sliding around feeling that CVTs typically have, and that should make a lot of people happy when they're driving their new Pathfinder. Fuel economy information is just not available yet, so check back at a later date for that information. Like the previous generation, the max tow capacity is 6,000 pounds. That's a really strong number. Uh, so long as you get the towing package equipped, that's how you get that figure. And I can see trailer sway control and all that goodness, but no trailer brake controller. But back to the number itself, 6,000 pounds is 1,000 pounds more than what you would get in like the Telluride or the Pilot. It's also more than what you'd get in the best versions of the Ford Explorer too. So really good on the Pathfinder. If you need to tow more than that though, uh, you should probably look at a Jeep Grand Cherokee or a Dodge Durango because those have slightly higher figures but that's a really good number on paper from the Pathfinder. Let's take a look at the cargo area of the Pathfinder. In terms of total storage space, it's going to be similar to uh, other mid-size SUVs with three rows out there like the Kia Telluride, but depending on row, it can change back and forth. Uh, and that just has to do with where the seats sit. In terms of storage back here with the third row deployed, this is how much space you're working with approximately, which is a decent height. And you also have this big pretty deep bin underneath the floor. That's pretty nice. Now dropping these seats down as a matter of flipping down each of these headrests. There you go. Flipping those levers and those fall pretty easily and that opens up your storage space a lot more. And I'll also show you how the second row drops down too. So you end up with not exactly a flat floor, but close enough where you can fit in large items pretty easily into this space, I would imagine. Ah. This interior looks really sharp. Um, like last year's new Rogue, the Pathfinder's interior update is comprehensive and really nicely done uh, in both from an appearance standpoint and a usability standpoint. Um, this certainly I don't think it's the most luxurious interior in the class, but it's much closer than it ever has been on first blush, if that makes sense. Uh, I like the layout of the center consoles, a fairly traditional front storage up front, cup holders in the center, armrests in the back, but you also have this large bin area underneath for larger, bulkier items that you don't want to have sitting on your lap or your passengers want to have sitting on their lap while you're driving or stuff you want to keep out of sight when you're parked. That's really nice. In terms of technology, um, this vehicle as we're sitting in it right now is dead. We had a lot of trouble getting shots of the technology and all the screens on while I was talking. So 
hopefully you can see some really nice detail shots of these screens when they're all on right now. But anyway, very large available digital gauge cluster that looks really sharp, um, a large head up display as well, and an available nine inch center display. For phone connectivity, you have Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, and wireless charging. On top of that, you have USB-C and the older USB hookup. So a lot of options for everybody in this car. These seats are fairly comfortable too, and this is generally the experience that I would hope to expect uh, paying presumably <laughs> the top dollar for the Nissan Pathfinder. Really nice stuff. Oh, and of course, like many other SUVs in this segment, you have a full suite of adaptive safety features uh, that you can get on your Pathfinder. Some standard, some optional. Uh, these include things like collision mitigation, uh, brake warning, proximity sensors, exterior cameras, uh, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, all the stuff that takes a lot of um, annoyance out of stop and go traffic on the freeway. You can get that with the Pathfinder as well. Let's take a look at the back seat. Now, as we get into the second row, this has the captain's chair. The lower trim levels will have a bench seat. That's how you get the eight seat configuration. Uh, in terms of space, this interior also feels really spacious for my initial impression. I'm about 5'10", so take with that what you will. I like the fact that these seats can slide fore and aft uh, to give you more leg room or to make the third row occupant's life harder, I guess. And you can also recline the seat quite a bit too. That gets, that gets pretty cozy back here. I like that. Um, I also like that these second row seats have privacy shades. You'll see that on other midsize three row SUVs that are similarly priced. And the center console or the center console storage area is fairly nice too with cup holders and a generously sized though uncovered storage area. Three zone climate control in this trim and also pretty generous uh, power connectivity ports as well. Uh, that's the second row. Now I'm gonna jump into the third row and show you how you do that with the second row seat and hopefully do it as gracefully as possible. Score me in the comments below. First, you gotta open the door. Right, hit this button. That leaps out of the way. Jump in the backwards, scary and dark. Pull this back in place and Again, it's it's dark back here, but size is adequate uh, based off where the seat landed. My knees are just touching it. Third rows are always for kids more so than anything else. And I think a smaller child would be totally fine back here, especially considering you have two cup holders on each side and USB power ports back here as well. Now getting out, I hit a button on the seat. It jumps out of the way. And ah, super graceful. So we don't know pricing, we don't know fuel economy, and we haven't done a full evaluation on this Pathfinder yet. So it's tough to say just where it's gonna land among midsize three row SUVs. I certainly look forward to that opportunity because given the exterior styling, the look and feel of the interior and the space and technology, it seems like this has a strong chance of being among the best. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give us a like and a comment. Also hit that subscribe button. Check the links in the description for more information about this SUV and others. And go to edmunds.com too. We'll find you a car, we'll find you a truck, we'll find you an SUV, we'll find you anything you want so long as it's a vehicle.